Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in this one I want to talk about a few of the methods I use for finding decent deals on used graphics cards right now. So you've probably noticed that the market for graphics cards is a bit of a mess, prices are pretty high and stock is pretty low but there are still some ways that you can find some decent deals on used hardware and I hope that by giving you a few personal, exam personal examples I can help you find the graphics card of your dreams or at least one that will tide you over until the graphics card of your dreams becomes available. Now there are a few obvious pieces of advice to get out of the way first. Let's say older graphics cards, older cards like the 7870, old flagships that were once a few hundred pounds or dollars or euros or whatever have now seen a significant reduction in price and even at the moment, at least from what I've seen in a lot of places, the prices of these older cards, while they may have inflated a little bit, aren't significantly overpriced like a lot of other stuff so if you only want to play games like fortnite gta skyrim csgo then it may be worth considering your options when it comes to older gpus perhaps cards that were once considered flagships there's also a lot of great stuff from the radeon r7 and r9 series floating around out there as well there are loads of 750 ti's you can get 750 ti's i believe from aliexpress if you want to wait for them to arrive i think the same can be said for 650s but it's worth looking around for older gpus just to see how the prices compare and then of course looking up a few gameplay videos here on youtube to see if they can offer up your desired performance in the titles that you want to play it's also worth remembering that there are still a few new cards in stock if you want to play Minesweeper, you can purchase a GT710 pretty easily, but there are also a few GT1030s floating around as well. And again, the prices of those hasn't really increased. I bought a 1030 not too long ago, um, and yeah, they are still somewhat capable if 30 FPS is acceptable and you don't mind playing at a lower resolution in a lot of titles. But again, for older games, let's say GTA, um, then one of those cards is probably going to be just fine. But here come the methods I use to find some deals amongst otherwise very expensive priced cards. And the first place I tend to look is eBay. Now the way I shop on eBay for graphics cards is by sorting the cards from newly listed. If you go onto eBay, there's usually a drop down filter menu um, that allows you to select the way in which you sort the results. You can either go price is low to high, low high to low, distance nearest first, ending soonest, but there's also an option to sort by newly listed. Now if you type in the graphics card that you want, you select the buy it now filter and you sort by newly listed, it isn't that difficult or you might not be waiting that long to find a deal that pops up. If you refresh the page every hour or so then there'll be a whole host of new listings available and it isn't always that difficult to pick up a well-priced find by using this method now you do have to be quick i'll admit if you are really serious about buying something then it might be worth refreshing the page a lot more than just once an hour but there are some decent deals that pop up there are a lot of people still out there who just want a quick sale and because of this they will list their hardware at a lower price than what is considered average at the moment. This is actually how I found a 1070 Ti that I tested a while ago. Not only that, but this card was a blower style card or a reference design style card. And I found that these ones generally tend to go for a bit cheaper as well. So not only was this card listed fairly recently when I purchased it but it was also a blower style card so it had two decent factors going for it when it comes to finding something at a decent price. That combination between reference card and a newly listed item really worked in my favour and I was able to pick it up for about £300 in a market where 1070 Ti's are going for well over four or 500. People do worry about the reference cards, they think they're quite noisy but honestly I had a reference 1080 Ti as well and it was one of the quietest GPUs I've ever used. The same goes for that Zotac 1070 Ti, it was surprisingly quiet and it didn't really get too hot to be honest. Another method I use for securing 
decent prices on used hardware is the clearance sections of popular websites. A lot of the websites that you use to purchase PC parts will have clearance or open box sections and more often than not there'll be a decent deal pop up on there. Now you may be waiting a while and you have to be pretty quick because I guarantee you there are other people looking but a good example of something I found recently was a 2060 Super from Overclockers here in the UK that was listed at just over £300. This was listed as a B grade item. B grade usually means a few marks or scratches here and there, missing accessories or perhaps a missing box. The 2060 cost me just over £300 and this is in a market again where these are selling for four to five hundred easily so I feel that that was a pretty successful find. Aside from the clearance section on popular websites you also have places like Amazon warehouse deals whereby you'll find open box products and I think Amazon are also doing a renewed um, service at the moment where they'll refurbish older not just PC parts and graphics cards but older tech and other products too and sometimes you can find decent bargains over there. Warehouse deals generally seems to be better though for finding decent deals not only on graphics cards but CPUs as well. A word of warning though I bought an i9 processor from Amazon warehouse deals not long ago and I just got the box someone had taken out the CPU sent the box back and somehow it had got through the quality control and uh, an empty box was sent out to me so yeah uh, always be quite cautious but luckily Amazon have a pretty decent return system and so do eBay for that matter it doesn't always work out in the seller's favor especially on eBay and it can be a bit unfair to sellers I find at times but if you are a buyer then you should be happy to know that the level of Buyer protection is is pretty good over there. Okay, so the next one, uh, a lot of you probably aren't going to like, but it is Facebook Marketplace. I only discovered Facebook Marketplace a couple of years ago, and I've bought so much stuff on there. I found an old 780 machine on there for about £200 a few years ago. You probably saw the video if you've been around here for a long time. It was full of cobwebs, uh, but it turned out to be a pretty good deal for the money and since then I found a lot of great used bargains on the marketplace. I found a free 69.90 a while back. The seller thought it was broken but it turns out that their power supply just wasn't powerful enough to handle the card and they ended up getting this card working by using a more powerful PSU and it's been running fine ever since right up until I sold it not that long ago. Again, because there are no seller fees on Facebook Marketplace and a lot of the stuff offered is for local collection, there are a lot of better deals to be had because people aren't sort of accounting for seller fees and postage costs and stuff like that like they do on eBay. If I'm selling on eBay, I tend to list things at a little bit of a higher price because I am just counting for the... Uh, fees that get taken off and the postage costs that I'll have to pay as well but on Facebook marketplace it's it's all cash so or bank transfer so yeah I've also found a lot of great deals on pre-builts recently the Acer Nitro machine that I showcased a while back was actually a 1660 super b grade pre-built from laptops direct here in the uk the prices of 1660 supers right now are at about three to four hundred pounds and i paid just 100 pounds more than that for the entire system which had an i5 inside of it so yeah that wasn't bad going we also had an ssd and a one terabyte hard drive in there too pre-builts I wouldn't have recommended a couple of years ago but right now if you compare them to the cost of building your own system from scratch in the current market sometimes you'll find that it really doesn't work out at too much more or it might even be a bit cheaper to buy a pre-built machine this goes extra for refurbished pre-built machines such as the Acer you have to bear in mind though that pre-built machines sometimes have proprietary motherboards, power supplies and upgrading them isn't always as easy as it may initially seem and sometimes they can't really be upgraded at all. It's always important to do your research of course. AMD APUs are also worth mentioning. We've tested the 4650G and the 4350G as well as the 3400G a few times here on this channel. AMD APUs are a great 
great, great way of getting into gaming right now on a very tight budget. For example, the 3400G with its integrated Vega 11 graphics or even the 3000G with its uh, integrated Vega 3 graphics are still capable of handling games like Fortnite and CSGO with reduced resolution and settings. So if you just want something to tide you over for now, then these really aren't bad options. And let's say you go for the 3400G, a four core eight threaded processor, you can slap a graphics card in an APU build later down the line, and the processor is still going to hold up just fine, even when paired with something like a GTX 1060 or entry level RTX card. I wouldn't rely as much on integrated Intel graphics though, as uh, I think I showed you the other day, the, even the i9 integrated graphics aren't up to much. Now my final piece of advice is for the daring, and that is taking a risk on untested hardware. There is plenty of untested hardware that's listed on places like eBay every day. Um, you'll often find that the sellers list these things as untested, but what they really mean is that they know it doesn't work, but by saying untested, they don't have to take any responsibility for it because if you buy it as an untested item, then the blame is on you. Now I've bought a few untested items. I bought a box of 25 untested graphics cards a while back and I think these were genuinely untested because it turned out that a few of them were working or I was actually able to bring a couple of them back to life with the heat gun method. Um, which yeah isn't obviously an ideal long-term solution because who knows when they're going to die again but untested hardware is available it is out there and if you want to take the risk well it's up to you but probably not a good idea to be honest but those are just a few pieces of advice advice that I personally use on a day-to-day -day basis for finding cheaper graphics cards or decent deals on GPUs too. Of course, this doesn't just apply to graphics cards. There are some decent deals to be found on everything by shopping around this way. If you want that dream GPU, well, there's no denying that it's probably going to be harder to find these days or more expensive. But I just wanted to point out that there are still some deals to be had. It just takes quite a bit more work these days than it used to. And on that note, well, I think it's time to end this video. Thank you very much for watching and uh, hopefully we'll be back with another hardware test very soon.